Today in the news, an AMD slide reveals all, and I'm afraid of these refreshes. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. All right, so we have some direct from AMD slides for the Ryzen 7000 platform, and that will debut the Zen 4 architecture. First, let's talk release. I believe that Robert Halleck mentioned this in the five years of Ryzen video, but now with this slide from AMD, it's 100% confirmed that Zen 4 will be there by the end of the year. We can also see that one segment is going to be split into two. Let me explain. In the past, with every generation of Zen architecture, we had one branch with integrated graphics. For example, take Zen 2. We had codename Matisse, that was the Ryzen 3000 series of CPUs, and if we look at APUs, it was called Renoir. On desktop, that was the 4000G series, and on the laptop segment, it was the 4000U and H series, and some 5000U series processors. For Zen 3, the desktop had codename Vermeer for desktop, and codename Cezanne for mobile APUs. Well, now we're looking at Raphael for the desktop CPUs, that's Zen 4, and for the APUs we have Dragon Range, previously thought to be Dragon Crest, and Phoenix, which we talked about in the past, the last couple of videos. First, we can see that the APUs are not coming until 2023. Not too surprising, laptop chips are only mentioned at CES for AMD, so it makes sense. Second is that AMD is splitting them way more aggressively. Now we've got dies for thin and light gaming laptops, so like the U and H series, and another for extreme gaming laptops, so for higher end H and HX models. I believe that the latter would be the one shared with the desktop market APUs. I say this because Dragon Range could only have DDR5, whereas Phoenix could be locked to LP DDR5. It could be that both support LP and regular DDR5, but that's just not what we see on the slides right now. The TDPs are also wildly different with 35 to 45 watts for the thin and lights and 55 watts plus for the extreme gaming laptops. Also, if we take a look at the wording on the right for Dragon Range, we can see that AMD says that it's the highest core, highest thread and cache ever for a mobile gaming CPU. Well, if Intel's current lineup goes to a max of 14 cores and 20 threads, that means that we're looking at a 16 core and 32 thread CPU from AMD. For the mobile market, that's kind of insane. I mean, Intel is going to double their efficient cores for Raptor Lake, but I don't see them release a six big core, 16 efficient core CPU for the mobile market. I just hope that Dragon Range has a solid graphics setup, like at least 16 compute units of RDNA 3. Unfortunately, we got zero info on that. The last takeaway we can have from this AMD slide is the fact that Zen 5 won't show up until 2024. That was definitely expected though. Also, with AMD, we now have more information on these refreshed GPUs that are incoming. Benchmarks popped up for the RX 6950 XT, and apparently it did exactly what it was supposed to do, beat the 3090 Ti. Now, this information comes from WCCF Tech, who compiled the results, and you can see the Time Spy scores in comparison. At 1440p, the 6950X beats the 3090 Ti by a whopping 6.5%. The 6750 XT beats the 3070 by about 4%, and the 6650 XT beats its predecessor by a little over 10%. Now, the first thing to note about these benchmarks is that some of these systems did have different CPUs. All of the 6050 XT models were benchmarked with the 5800X3D. But since it seems like we're looking at graphics scores here, it shouldn't make a huge difference. Now, scores are cool and all, but here's what might rub me the wrong way. So these models Models are apparently, according to current rumors, coming in to replace the older models, right? And realistically, with a modest overclock and slightly faster memory from 16 to 18 gigabits per second, we're looking at about a max of what? 
10% performance improvements. I mean, even that seems a little high in my opinion, but let's say 10%. So what happens if AMD decides to up the MSRP on these cards compared to the predecessors? The 6950 XT becomes, let's say 1200 bucks or 1100 bucks. The 6750 XT goes from 480 to 529 or 579. Or what if the 6650 XT goes from 379 to 400 or 429? Well, you might be paying about 10% more for 10% more performance, but you're doing so a full year to a year and a half later. I mean, Nvidia is doing it already, but I really hope that AMD doesn't. If they do, it's clear that all they want is to make their prices creep up for the next generation, meaning that all of the 7000 series will be based on the current 6950 XT and 6850 XT prices. Sorry, 6750 XT. There's no 6850 XT. So what do you guys think? Let me know down below. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for today's video. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about today's stories. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. By the way, it's very red, very red in here. Take care.